do you need a community when you learn programming? Absolutely, absolutely. Hmm. Being a developer is a is a very lonely journey sometimes when you're learning on your own. But the best way to move forward, the best way to progress fast and accelerate your your journey as a developer is to be with a cohort or a community of people where you're all learning and you're all growing together, right? And developers are all, in a way, the same. We all want to learn a lot of things. We yeah. all want to grow. We all want to yeah. do well in our careers. And we right. all want to solve great problems, right? That's mm-hmm. all. We just want to do exciting things. And so when you're around a like-minded group of people, you can feed off each other's efforts. Uh, you can always learn better. You can share your knowledge. You can partner up, build stuff together. And I think that's one of the, the best parts. Selamat datang di Ceritanya Developer, podcast yang menampilkan developer, programmer, atau engineer Indonesia inspiratif yang tersebar di seluruh dunia. Bersama saya Riza, kita akan menggali bagaimana mereka berjuang, suka duka dalam perjalanan karir hingga kesalahan konyol saat ngoding. Podcast ini disponsori oleh Showcase.com. Showcase adalah sebuah jaringan profesional yang dibuat oleh dan untuk developer sebagai tempat untuk berkoneksi, membangun komunitas, dan menemukan peluang baru. Dan sekarang kita sudah bersama dengan founder dan juga CEO dari Showcase, karena ini adalah special episode, special episode dari Showcase, kita sambut saja Mr. Rong Liu. Halo, Rong. Uh, halo, salam kenal. Nama saya Rong Liu, adalah co-founder dan CEO di Showcase. Uh, selamat sore semua. Selamat sore semua. Wah, wow, bisa bahasa Indonesia ya? Bisa, bisa, bisa. Bisa. <laughs> Oke, okay. bahasa Indonesia sampai di sana. Sekarang kita ngomong bahasa Inggris ya. <laughs> yeah. Cukup ya. Terima cukup, kasih. Cukup, cukup. Oke, okay. you already introduce yourself, but uh, I want to know what kind of person uh, do you want to be known as? Okay, first of all, uh, maybe I'll just say hi. Uh, thank you, Masriza, for having me uh, on the show, uh, Twitter developer, and for the Indonesian audience. Uh, it's very, very grateful. For me to be here, uh, to be able to speak. So, so your question about who, who do I want to be known as? Did you say? Yes. That's a very tough, very very tough question. Uh, so maybe I, I can start a bit about my background, and then we'll go into, you know, maybe what kind of person I want to be known as, right? Okay. So, I am. I'm from Malaysia. First of all, yep. I'm from Kuala Lumpur. Uh, a lot of my my background is built up through education, uh, whereby I've been to many, many different schools. I went to a Chinese school. I went to an English school. I went to an international school. And then I went to boarding school. Uh, and then I did my undergraduate in the University of College London in London, in the UK. Uh, and I did that in economics. Uh, after that, I worked uh, in the finance background for a while, in private equity, in public equities, on the buy side and the sell side. And then I took a break to try to become a chef, actually. Uh, and I did that for a few months in, in Tokyo, in Japan. And then I had the opportunity to go into tech in more depth. Uh, because when I was in the investing world, in the finance world, I started to look at a lot of companies that needed to use technology to transform their businesses, right? And so from there, I was really interested in technology but I realized that I was a bit handicapped. Like I didn't understand what it means to a developer, to be a developer, right? What is a string, you know, what is cloud? What is blockchain, right? I didn't understand any of it. Any of it. Like how do you build a mobile app? How do you build a web app? What's the difference, right? So I didn't understand any of that. And so what I did was I wanted to do a master's in computer science to really understand the whole space. So I went to San Francisco uh, to do a master's in computer science for three and a half years. Now, after I came out of that program, I'm now, running a startup called Showcase, which is a professional network for coders. Now, you asked me what I want to be known as. So a lot of people have asked me before, right? Like, am I a, am I a developer? Or do I feel like I'm a developer? Uh, do I feel like I'm more of an entrepreneur? Or do I feel like uh, I'm more of a computer scientist? You know, a lot of people ask me these questions. I think, personally, I don't have a preference and I don't try to associate myself with each of these. But rather, I think what is a good theme around all three, an entrepreneur, a computer scientist, or a developer, is that we solve problems, right? And that is, I think, what I would like to be known as, a problem solver, where there are a lot of problems in our world, and there are many ways you can solve it. 
and, and I would like to be someone who goes out, sees a problem, and try to solve it. So I think that is maybe how I can answer that question. Okay, wow, uh, very long uh, journey, yeah, become <laughs> to become a developer and entrepreneur, uh, to be specific. Yeah, you said that you want to solve uh, problems. So why you build showcase? What problem do you uh, want to solve? Well, so when my co-founder and I uh, first started Showcase, uh, it was it was actually just a school project, right? So we were doing the masters in computer science together. Uh, we had a class where we had to build our own project, and we wanted to solve a project. And so naturally, I always want to solve something that I face as a person, but also something that other people are facing. And the problem that we realized was we thought that developer representation is not well solved, right? Meaning, if you want to know who I am as a developer, my skills, my knowledge, and my abilities, how do you best do that? And back then was 2020, right? How do you do that in 2020? And what we realized was that you would have to send your resume, you would have to send your portfolio, maybe your LinkedIn, maybe your GitHub, maybe your your blog. Uh, so many platforms, right? Maybe your your side projects, right, that you've worked on. So we we were just trying to solve the problem of developer representation. How can you send one page or one link to represent who you are holistically, right? And a developer to showcase who they are with their skills, their knowledge, and their abilities is a is a long list of things. Which is who have I worked with as a developer, right? Who are my ex colleagues? Who are my professors? Who are my my classmates? What do we work on? So what are the projects that I've done? What are the companies I've worked at, right? And then uh, the final thing is what can I do? Right? What are my skills? What are my tech stack, right? And naturally, all these links, so your resume, your portfolio, your LinkedIn, your GitHub, all of them do a small part of this whole holistic view of you, right? And so at Showcase, that's what we wanted to solve, which is how can we create one platform? You just send one link, and that's everything you are, right? That's who you are holistically. So that's as a developer, that's who you are holistically, and that's what we wanted to solve. Okay, so uh, from our talks uh, when we met, yeah, a couple weeks ago. Jakarta, uh, yes. Uh, yeah, Jakarta. in Jakarta, and uh, we we talk much about community and how showcase can uh, leverage that uh, community. Uh, do you feel? Uh, do you need something? Uh, do you need a community when yeah. you learn programming? Absolutely, absolutely. Mm. Uh, and I'll, I'll tell you why. When I 24 hours before I learned how to code, I, I I joined this master's program and I didn't know how to code. And 24 hours before my course started, I read this book called Java in 24 Hours, right? And, and that's literally my, my beginning. And the first 12 weeks of this master's program where I had to catch up and learn how to code, I was completely lost. But the only, and I probably would have given up if I was just sitting at home on my own learning an online course. But the reason why I think I pulled through is because I was with a classroom about, with about 40 to 50 people that we're all going through the same thing. We're trying to solve the same problems. We're trying to understand the same concepts. That was my community at the time, right? And so to me, being a developer is a, is a very lonely journey sometimes when you're learning on your own. But the best way to move forward, the best way to progress fast and accelerate your, your journey as a developer is to be with a cohort or a community of people where you're all learning and you're all growing together, right? And developers are all in a way the same. We all want to learn a lot of things. We yeah. all want to grow. We all want to yeah. do well in our careers. And we right. all want to solve great problems, right? That's mm -hmm. all, we just want to do exciting things. And so when you're around a like-minded group of people, you can feed off each other's efforts. Uh, you can always learn better. You can share your knowledge. You can partner up, build stuff together. And I think that's one of the, the best parts of being a developer, the community. Okay, and how uh, Showcase can leverage uh, that uh, around community? So Showcase as a platform, when we started, I said we, we were only focused on developer representation. That's, that's all we wanted to solve, right? But we realized that not many people were in the market for just a, a portfolio to just showcase everything you are, right? So when we started that project, we actually built that like for eight months and we only had about 3,300 users on the platform, right? Not many people were looking for that. But then we realized something else which is a developer needs three main things. First, we need to represent who we are. The second thing we love to do is we love to hang out with the community, whether it's you know, data science, machine learning, Java, JavaScript, 
uh, Web3, blockchain, it doesn't really matter. We love to hang out with the community, right? Share your ideas, share your project, give me feedback on my portfolio, all these things. And then the final thing we need as a developer, doesn't matter who you are, is you need access to work, work opportunities so you can monetize, right? Your skills and your knowledge. So that's what we do at Showcase, right? Showcase does the representation part. We do the community aspect, and then we do the work opportunities aspect. So that's what Showcase is uh, today. And to your question about, you know, how can you find community on Showcase? Today, we on Showcase, we have 185 communities, active communities from everything from, you know, Golang to Indonesia community to India community to, you know, memes community to Hacker News community. And you can go to Showcase, you can join any of these communities mm -hmm. and find like-minded individuals. Oh, okay. What about the business model of Showcase? Uh, Showcase is, is free, right? So how do you find or how you monetize that platform? So there are, there are two main ways that we monetize, actually. So the first way is uh, through jobs, right? So if you're a company and you would like to get your jobs in front of the developer audience, and today every company is becoming a tech company, So everybody is looking for developers, right? Whether you are a retail company, a logistics company, or you're the traditional software company, everybody needs developers to build their products. Uh, and so we work with companies that are looking to hire, and then they can come to Showcase, and they can attract, they can recruit, and they can hire developer talent directly on the platform. And that's how we make our money. The second way we make our money is our partnership with content creators. So we work with a lot of content creators to create content for our audience, to create content for the community. And these content creators, they have an option to monetize their content, right? Being a content creator is a full-time job. It's very hard to create content, right? I think we, this is something we talked about in, in Jakarta, right? Like yes. you, you, you can spend hours and hours a day, you know, building a following on Twitter or LinkedIn or creating video content or doing podcasts, but it's so hard for you to monetize, right? And you can even be writing articles on Medium, on dev.to, on Hashnode, these platforms, great platforms, but it's so hard to monetize. So what we do is we partner with content creators. They write their content on the platform and we help them monetize through a few uh, channels. They can enable subscriptions or they can enable one-off payments whereby these content creators, they bring it to the audience and this audience can pay for them. Whereby we facilitate this and we take a small cut from their uh, revenues. That's how we make money. Okay, wow. And from I heard that uh, Showcase got uh, fun or support from uh, ex-founder of Bukalapak, Sinux and Ahmad Zaki yes. uh, with Init6, yes. right? How did you meet them? So this is, uh, so I think one of the amazing parts of the startup journey is that you meet people from all walks of life, right? Like I've never, I haven't been to Indonesia for the last 16 years, for example, but for some reason, just through the startup community, just through developer communities and people, we got introduced, Amaz, uh, Masaki and, uh, and Mas, Masino, uh, through, a, through a mutual friend. And apparently we both shared a huge passion for developers or coders, you know? Especially, you know, Mazaki and Masino, they built Bukalapak themselves. They have a software background. And so when we met, it was it was so easy to talk to them about Showcase, you know? Usually when you talk to, you know, business-minded people, it's always very hard to tell them, oh yeah, you know, Showcase is a platform for developers. And then they ask you, why do developers need a platform? You know, you know, like it's very hard to get it through. But the first time I talked to uh, Mazaki and Masino, we weren't even talking about why do developers need a platform? We were talking about like, how can we build it for developers, right? What ideas do you have? What can we do? Uh, how can we bring this to the developers in Indonesia, for example? And so that's how it started. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's been amazing meeting uh, Masaki and Masino. Okay, uh, just for information, uh, the, the community in Indonesia, especially in uh, developer in Indonesia, they usually have uh, like small groups in WhatsApp group or Telegram or even now Discord, right? What about uh, developer community in another uh, country? Do you have some insight? Is it the same or different? Uh, it's a bit it's a bit of the same, but it's a bit a bit different as well. I mean, so I would say 
uh, depending on the size of your community, the topic, the mode of communication that you're looking for. Communities, you can aggregate around Telegram or WhatsApp or uh, Reddit or Discord or Slack. I mean, there are so many platforms today where you can find developer communities, right? The question is, what kind of interactions do you want, right? So for example, I'll break this down into asynchronous and synchronous and uh, pseudonymous and professional, I guess. Anonymous or professional. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, LinkedIn, for example, as a, the community on LinkedIn, is a professional community and it's asynchronous, right? You make a post, it might be there today, it might also be there tomorrow, it might even be there next week, right? Because if you search by popular or you rank by popular, the algorithm might feed it to you. Now, in direct contrast to that, might be something like uh, Discord, or yeah. whereby it's kind of like, or, or maybe even Telegram, which is real-time communication. So you might post something today, but in five seconds, it's gone, right? It, it, it just keeps going up, yes. right? And then it, you also don't know who people are, right? So that's also the other thing with Telegram, right? So those are the two edges of the spectrum. Then you have Reddit, which is kind of like pseudonymous, mm -hmm. but then it's asynchronous. So you post something today, it might still be there tomorrow, whatever, right? You can still search it, right? It's in search indexable. And then you have um, Slack. You know who everybody is in the platform, but it's real-time communication, right? But it's only within mm. Teams. So, so I, I mean, I guess it depends on your use case, right? How do you want to interact? For us on Showcase, we prefer the asynchronous mode of communication because then it's search indexable and all these valuable content that people share, it can live a longer life, right? It doesn't have to be gone in, in five seconds. It doesn't have to be gone in 10 seconds. So we focus on asynchronous communication and we focus on you know, the identity of developers so you can really showcase who you are, so you can connect with other developers and then you can find work. That's can you share about fun stage of Showcase right now? So uh, Showcase is actually in our, we just closed our seed. Seed funding. Stage, mm -hmm. right? Sorry, sorry, our pre-seed. Sorry. Pre-seed, so, okay. Yeah, so, so far uh, we've raised a bit more than a million dollars and we had $100,000 uh, when we were just starting up, uh, a very, 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 very generous and someone who believed in myself and my co-founders invested only $100,000 when we were three, four months into building this thing, right? We barely had anything, just an idea. And we had $100,000 because mm -hmm. he believed in what we wanted to do. He believed in the space and he believed in the future where everybody in the world, or every company, every business and every idea needed developers, needed coders, right? So that's what we had. A year later, when we launched the current product that you can see on showcase.com today, we had more users, yep. more activity, mm -hmm. uh, more product market fit. And that's when I met Masaki, Masinok, and a few other uh, angel investors. And that's where we raised up to about a million dollars, right? And so that's where we are today. We are in our pre-seed round, and we will probably do our seed fundraising soon. That's what we're planning for. Okay. Uh, what's, what is the challenge in every uh, funding st stage? Do you have uh, insight? So this is, I'm guessing this message is for some other potential founders out there, right? Yes. Yeah. The first thing I'll say is, I think to me, to be honest, I think startups all, is all about milestones. You hit a milestone. So so let me, let me explain what are milestones. When you have an idea, you don't know if this idea can work, right? And that's why you have this idea called the MVP. So the first milestone you need to get to is you don't know if your idea can work. It might just be a problem that you're facing and nobody else shares this problem. So you build an MVP, you put it out to the market and you test it with your classmates, your friends, your first degree connections, your first set of users or your family. That's your first milestone. If you're solving a problem that they, uh, that they face, then you go to the next milestone. You say, okay, now that the MVP works, now I talk to my customers and I say, how can I improve this product? Then you get to the next milestone and you solve the next problem, right? When you get to the next milestone, maybe you need some funding. So then you might find some investors, you might pitch to investors. If you do get some money, you get to get to the next milestone, right? That's why there are all these fundraising rounds, right? So you have you know, angel rounds, pre-seed rounds, seed rounds, bridge rounds, series A, series B rounds. Every round you, you get to is when you hit a new milestone, right? And so startups are about milestones, in my opinion. You get to different levels where you 
first validate the idea, validate the product, validate the community, validate the customers, and you go from there. Once you have a certain milestone, that's when you're, you're off to the races and uh, that becomes a startup. I heard that uh, Showcase uh, is a remote working company uh, and the team comes all over the world. Uh, how do you you manage them with different background and culture and uh, something like that? So, so this is actually the beauty of the world that we live in today. So I'll talk a bit about Showcase first. So me, my co-founders, uh, I'm from Malaysia, but I was in San Francisco mm-hmm. at the time. My co-founder, Faizan, he's Indian and he's from Mumbai. And my other co-founder, Roman, he's from Tallinn, Estonia. Okay. And none of us have ever met each other before. That's the reason. None of us have oh. met each other before. Okay. okay. Now, those are three countries. Our team is also in Jakarta, Indonesia, is also in Bandung. Uh, it's also, they are also from different parts of India, uh, in Bangalore, in Delhi. We also have team members from Ghana, uh, team members from Nigeria, team members from Vietnam, team members from Ooh. San Francisco, where, where we started the company, and we had team members from Australia. So everybody is remote. Mm. And, and yeah. what I wanted to get back to was, I think this is the beauty of work in in the modern day, right? Which is, Mm -hmm. you can tap into the talent pool of the world instead of, you know, within 30 kilometers from, 30 kilometer radius from where I am today, right? Uh, Especially for developers, which is how you hire a team of developers today to cross collaborate with the tools that are available, like GitHub, like Discord, like uh, Slack, Mm -hmm. like Zoom, Yes. It's so easy today, like, you know, Notion and all these uh, uh, document sharing platforms. It's so easy to cross collaborate and it's so efficient. And the beauty of a founder or and a beauty as a developer is that you can work from anywhere in the world, right? I always tell, hopefully one day you live in Bali by the beach, okay? Mm-hmm. You yeah. have a laptop and you're a developer. You wake mm-hmm. up in the morning you maybe you just finished surfing and then you have your showcase app you open the app and then you have five requests from people that you've worked with or your circle we call a circle on showcase yeah offering you okay you got a job from america a job from brazil a job from singapore a job from jakarta take a job and then you can work on the job for three months six months nine months if you want and then you can live anywhere in the world get paid from anywhere in the world and you know, live from the comfort of your own home or wherever, right? And that's the beauty of today's work. With today's laptops, with today's technology, you can do that. And I think that is the future, in my opinion, or maybe a hybrid model where mm-hmm. you can meet the team once in a while, but eventually everybody goes back home to stay with their family. So I really believe in this future. Yeah. Uh, and I think it's, it's really exciting, right? Uh, hopefully we get to even having this call with you, uh, Masirila. I think it's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. The the engagement is not that, especially for person who join without us uh, meet each other first, right? Uh, how 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 can you overcome that like uh, engagement or social interaction? Uh, you need to uh, to replace that, right? Do you, do you mean in a work environment? Yeah, in work environment. Yeah, like like if we are if we are colleagues, you mean? Yes. Ah, I see. I see. Yeah. So. That, that's why I said, I think some things can't be replaced, right? Hmm. Uh, when you work with someone in the office, you have that human connection every day. Connection, you have that yeah. social connection. You have the water cooler chats. Yes. Uh, and, and that's very, very nice because especially when you're at the forefront of technology, you're working on innovation, you're designing new ideas, mm-hmm. you want to always brainstorm and uh, crack your heads together, right? To find a new solution. Yeah. And so that's really important. Don't get me wrong. I I really think that's important as well. However, there are also efficiencies that you can gain from working remotely. And so to overcome that, uh, the first thing is, I would say that when you're looking to build a team around you, a team of people around you, you always need to make sure that your principles are aligned, right? Your, the way you think, right? So you, you don't have, you know, when you meet someone and you feel like you've been friends with them for you know, so many years, right? As if you were kids, you know, forget together. Mm -hmm. So when you build your team around you, first of all, you want to build 
the people around you to be you know, a core set of people that have that share the same ideas, share, share the same principles, share the same thinkings. That's the first thing. So you're there to work, right? You join the team to deliver this idea, to push this idea forward, to bring this idea to market. That's the goal of a company and that's why you're joining, right? It's not here, you're not here to socialize. However, to, to do socializing, uh, to, to, do, to socialize, to engage with each other, to get to know each other better, you can always jump on calls, right? After work to get to know each other better. And as I said before, if you, if you can do it, if you have the funds to do it, you should meet the team members once every, once a, once a while, right? Maybe four times a year, mm. maybe twice a year. Yeah. But you meet in, you know, Jakarta or, or Singapore or London or San Francisco, you meet the team, bring the team together. And then you have a two week session where the team is working together, meeting each other, having each other's company and, and working towards the goal. I think that is really, really productive for any remote driven company. I want to experiment with new segment. I call that rapid question. I don't know if this will work or not, but uh, let's try, okay? Okay. What computer do you use currently? I have the uh, latest MacBook M1 Pro. Oh, M1, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Ooh, nice. M1, yes. Yeah, but uh, a couple of days ago, uh, they launched M2, right? Yeah, they did. They did. I mean, technology moves so fast. Right? Yeah. I, I mean, Apple is delivering every year. It's amazing. Okay. Uh, and what keyboard or mouse do you use? I use uh, I use two. I use a oh, I see. an Apple trackpad and I use a Razer uh, gamer mouse. Mm. So I have two. One for my left hand, one for my right hand. Okay. Uh, and then for my keyboard, I use an Apple Uh, Apple keyboard. Uh, keyboard, yeah, wireless keyboard. Your mouse is not wireless. No, no, no. Wire, just, wire. Like, my, just like my head, just like my headphones. Okay, okay. Wire. <laughs> old school, old school. <laughs> okay. Uh, what about uh, phone? I use uh, an iPhone. iPhone. An iPhone 11. 11. An iPhone 11. Okay. The broken iPhone 11 Pro. Okay. And what about text editor, themes or fonts <laughs> that you currently use? Text editor? Yes. Like Notion? Uh, like IDE? Uh, no, no. Uh, I mean like code editor. Oh, code editor. I use VS mm. Code. VS Code. Do you know the theme yeah. is right now? Uh, I use the, the most basic theme. Yeah. <laughs> the default theme? <laughs> okay. Yeah, the default theme. The blue. I like it. It's nice. Okay. Okay. Got it. And <clears throat> next question. If you could start over could start coding from scratch today, what would you choose to learn? What platform like web or mobile or desktop or game? What languages or what library do you use? Well, this is, so now is the hard question. Now is the hard. So you, you, you warm me up with the easy questions and then now is the hard question. Uh, if I could start again yeah. coding. Mm -hmm. so, I, so I went to university, right? So mm -hmm. master's, master's university and I learned from scratch. Yeah. I think I would still, so, so one of the things that a bootcamp teaches you, I think, uh, is that a bootcamp teaches you how to get a job. Yes. And they teach you what the, you know, maybe the, the most recent technologies. The current technology, yeah. The, the current technologies that the companies are using, right? Yes. So you might use, you know, maybe today like React, JavaScript, mm -hmm. uh, or TypeScript, and yeah. then you might use Node.js, or like a Mern stack, you know, they use, you use what's modern. Mm -hmm. But when I was learning how to code, I didn't get any of that. I didn't learn any front end. I didn't learn any web development per se, I went down to computer science basics, right? Like parallel programming, discrete mm. math, Java, you know, yeah. C, C, how do you, where do you store memory? You know, okay. like all that basic stuff. And in my opinion, I think I really did enjoy that, mm -hmm. at least for the first year, you know, just to understand your fundamentals. Because I think, and I, I think if I could do it again, I would still do that, okay. right? To okay. learn the basics of, you know, Java, How do you store an array? How do you index an array? And, and I would learn from the scratch because, and I'll tell you why. Hmm. When I was in San Francisco and I, I went there to learn how to code, but to me, it was more than just learning how to code. I went there to learn how to understand the tech industry, understand what it's all about, learn the history of technology. I read the, the book, is it The Innovators? I think the history of technology, you know, who created the browser, Ada Lovelace, when with the first desktop computer come out, when the laptops, I did, I learned the whole history, mm -hmm. when the GPUs come out and I learned that whole process. And I think that's really important to know 
because you, I think the history of technology is important to know before you understand the future, right? Uh, I know this is a bit longer answer, I guess. It's okay. But I, I think it's really important because because I was in San Francisco and because I was learning about technology and not just you know web development or mobile development that allowed me to have a bigger picture of what's happening, and that's how you know I even started Showcase. Uh, at the time, I was also investing into tech companies, right? Uh, if I learn about GPUs, and then I would invest into you know Nvidia. If I learn about APIs and uh, APIs as a service, I would invest into companies like uh, Cloudflare and and, and uh, Twilio and these companies. So it, it's always better to have a bigger understanding instead of just saying, okay, I just want to be a web developer. I just want to be a mobile developer. Okay. But what I would say is I would learn all the fundamentals for at least a year to understand that. And then I would go into what is modern, right? And then mm. I would probably start with web development. Uh, if you ask me, React, JavaScript, TypeScript, uh, and then you know, MySQL and all that. Nice. Right? What, what technology that uh, you use in Showcase? So today on Showcase, uh, we use uh, React, TypeScript and Re- uh, for the front end. Yep. Uh, we run it on Next.js as a framework. Okay. And then... Uh, we on the back end we have both a SQL and NoSQL databases depending on the content that we're storing. We host everything on AWS today, uh, so we use a bunch of services like S3, EC2s, uh, API gateways. We use all of that. Uh, we also have caching layers like Redis. We distribute our content uh, using some CDNs, uh, using Cloudflare. That is the general framework, right? Like we can go into more depth about how we use every single like Sentry and all these tools, but I think that's the that's the general. Okay, uh, last one. Uh, because you have a banking and financial background, are you a blockchain believer or skeptic? Oh, so con- controversial, controversial. <laughs> uh, so there is something interesting in in blockchain. I think uh, now. I will start this answer. Start the answer with: There are a lot of scams. There are a lot of nonsense in the market, and okay. and of, of course, every time there's something new, there'll always be a lot of fluff, yeah. right? Uh, but mm-hmm. it's so bad sometimes, right? The the fact that a lot of these founders, a lot of these projects, NFT projects or token projects are just complete scams is very dangerous out there for anybody. But yes. but if you drill down to the technology. I think there are some use cases, right? Now, I don't think it solves every mm-hmm. single problem, right? I, I know some people talk about that, yeah. like, oh my God, blockchain is going to solve everything. It's going to change everything. Maybe, right? I, I don't know, maybe. But in my opinion, it has different, a specific use case. And that specific use case is that you, for, for the first time ever, you can transfer something digitally uh, and you don't have the... Decentralized? No, I mean, it's decentralized. Yeah, first of all, you don't have to trust a central yeah. party. But you solve the double spending problem. That's what it's called. Right? So first, if you read the first Bitcoin web, web paper, the problem is that you, they solve the double yeah. spend problem. That's what, very interesting. Uh, using cryptography. Mm-hmm. The other thing that's really interesting mm-hmm. uh, about blockchains is that for the first time, I mean, I guess it's similar to the double spending problem, but it's trust, right? You can, you, you use algorithmic and cryptographically proven Uh, trust and you let the computer do it and so i believe that there are some applications to that but it doesn't solve everything right like uh one one of my good friends always talked to me about he works in big companies like youtube and amazon the amount of throughput you need to deliver content at scale to billions of people around the world is so hard to achieve with something uh like where blockchain is today that might change in the future but uh You know, is yet to see. But so, so what I'm trying to say is, I am very interested in the technology. I think it solves a lot of problems, like programmable money. That's also something that's quite interesting. But it doesn't solve everything, right? And uh, we just, as developers, as people, as technologists, we just have to take everything with a grain of salt, study it, make our own judgment on it, and not just dive into it because you know there's hype. Okay, wow. <laughs> where people can find you online, uh, maybe uh, where you can send people who wants to know what you're working on right now. So you can definitely find me uh, on three main platforms, which is Showcase, okay. Twitter, and LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, I'm most active on Showcase, obviously, because I love, I prefer hanging out with developers. I love the content that we, we, we all uh, showcase and, and engage. Yes. Twitter sometimes, uh-huh. uh, 
depending on what kind of content I'm looking for, uh, Twitter, and then LinkedIn, you know, once in a while. Uh, yeah, once in a while, I'll check LinkedIn to see, you know, who added me as a network maybe. Okay. But I don't engage much on, on LinkedIn. Mm-hmm. So those are the three places you can find me. Okay. You can, uh, can you share your handle? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> so on Showcase, it's uh, Tian Rong Liu, uh, which is actually my full name. Uh, on on Twitter, it's wrong underscore showcase. Okay. And then on LinkedIn, it's wrong Liu, I think. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, maybe before we closing up, uh, any other interesting story you have been told? Maybe a showcase hiring or maybe you can invite the content creator to join a showcase? Yeah. I mean, so I'll, I'll just say one thing, which is, Uh, the reason why I was in Jakarta and I was meeting uh, Mas uh, Riza here, and also I met with Masino and uh, more more people, is because I think Jakarta is a great place for developers. Mm-hmm. I met a lot of very very good developers in Jakarta. I think Jakarta has. I mean, I think Indonesia is a beautiful place, a great future, and so Showcase is working with a lot of content creators, working with a lot of. Uh, developers in the region, in, in the country to, to really build up a really, really strong developer community. So if you haven't heard about Showcase, please join us at showcase.com. That's two W's, showcase, uh, two W's.com. And uh, we can connect there. We can join communities and let's all learn, grow, share a knowledge uh, and, and grow as a developer. So excited to, to meet all kinds of people from all over the world, but especially Jakarta. Especially not Jakarta, especially Indonesia. Indonesia. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, we are finished now. Uh, thank you so much, Rong, for your time uh, and uh, good luck with your uh, showcase and everything else. Thank you. Terima kasih. Terima kasih untuk narasumber yang sudah menyempatkan waktunya untuk hadir dan berbagi cerita di ceritanya developer. Kritik dan saran bisa dilayangkan ke Twitter at RizaFahmi22 atau boleh colek saya di showcase.com slash RizaFahmi. Linknya bisa dicek di deskripsi ya. Sampai jumpa lagi di episode berikutnya. Bye-bye.